Hello, aloha, dear friends, TGIF, and happy Yamaha. We are jumping back into our next reading from the World Order of Baha'u'llah. Selected letters from Shoghi Fendi to the Baha'is of the U.S. and Canada. And this second letter in this compilation was written in March. So we're almost aligning with that. So it was Nauru's March 21st of 1930. So just, just a few months after the first letter, which we wrapped last week, and we're going to be revisiting some of those same themes, essentially in my own words, how Shoghi Fendi is reminding us that challenges are blessings in disguise. And we're going to get into that. Before we move on, I just want to remind you to sign up for my project, 19 Days of Inspiration, which is daily art and devotional emails every day of the Baha'i Fast. So that's March 1st through 20th, essentially. Such an intense and mindful time. I'm really excited to share with you all of my new artwork. I've been you know, very busy during 2020. There was no travel, so I was traveling in my mind and making beautiful visions of art and our uh, spiritual visions through art or something like that. But I really think you'll enjoy it, especially if you're Baha'i and you're fasting, but even if you are not, um, it will be a, a very rich, you know, daily meditation. So I hope you sign up for that. I have links below. All right, my friends, jumping in to the second letter that has been titled The World Order of Baha'u'llah, Further Considerations. To the beloved of the Lord and the handmaids of the merciful throughout the West, dearly beloved co-workers, amid the reports that have of late reached the Holy Land, most of which witness to the triumphant march of the cause a few seem to betray a certain apprehension regarding the validity of the institutions which stand inseparably associated with the faith of Baha'u'llah. These expressed misgivings appear to be actuated by certain whisperings which have emanated from quarters which are either wholly misinformed regarding the fundamentals of the Baha'i Revelation or which deliberately contrive to sow the seeds of dissension in the hearts of the faithful. And remember, this was the impetus for the November 27th, 29 letter that we wrapped last week. Um, the Ruth White specifically, I think, because he refers to a she, and he always mentions the pity that he has for her, her misunderstanding or her maliciousness, um, trying to sow these seeds of confusion about the institutions of the faith. I think essentially her, the heart of her argument was saying that the faith was all spiritual and Shoghi Fendi is saying the institutions are an instrument of this spiritual rejuvenation that is the faith of Baha'u'llah and this has always been part of it that Baha'u'llah has given this design for the organization of the Baha'i community and of the world. That is my putting it in my words my understanding and here he reminds us a blessing in disguise Viewed in the light of past experience the inevitable result of such futile attempts however persistent and malicious they may be, is to contribute to a wider and deeper recognition by believers and unbelievers alike of the distinguishing features of the Baha'i faith proclaimed by Baha'u'llah, an opportunity for wider and deeper recognition of the believers and their friends or their not friends, the unbelievers, of the distinguishing features of the faith of Baha'u'llah. 
these challenging criticisms, whether or not dictated by malice, cannot but serve to galvanize the souls of its ardent supporters and to consolidate the ranks of its faithful promoters, to galvanize and consolidate. They will purge the faith from the pernicious elements whose continued association with the believers tends to discredit the fair name of the cause and to tarnish the purity of its spirit. We should welcome, therefore, not only the open attacks which its avowed enemies persistently launch against it, but should also view as a blessing in disguise every storm of mischief with which they who apostatize their faith or claim to be its faithful exponents assail it from time to time. Isn't Shoghi Effendi just a master of words? I mean, he, and I mean this like so sincerely, he's just like dropping mics all the time and just the way he puts words together. So a bless, we should view as a blessing in disguise every storm of mischief with which they who apostatize their faith or claim to be its faithful ex exponents assail it from time to time. Instead of undermining the faith, such assaults, both from within and from without, reinforce its foundations and excite the intensity of its flame. Designed to be cloud its radiance, they proclaim to all the world the exalted character of the precepts, the completeness of its unity, the uniqueness of its position, and the pervasiveness of its influence. I do not feel for one moment that such clamor, mostly attributable to impotent rage against the resistless march of the cause of God, can ever distress the valiant warriors of the faith. For these heroic souls, whether they be contending in America's impregnable stronghold or struggling in the heart of Europe and across the seas as far as the continent of Australasia, have already abundantly demonstrated the tenacity of their faith and the abiding value of their conviction. I'm going to go on to the next section, which is titled Distinguishing Features of the Baha'i World Order. I feel it, however, incumbent upon me by virtue of the responsibility attached to the guardianship of the faith to dwell more fully upon the essential character and the distinguishing features of that world order as conceived and proclaimed by Baha'u'llah. I feel impelled at the present stage of the evolution of the Baha'i revelation to state candidly and without reservation whatever I regard may tend to ensure the preservation of the integrity of the nascent institutions of the faith without reservation. I strongly feel the urge to elucidate certain facts which would at once reveal to every fair-minded observer the unique character of that divine civilization, the foundations of which the unerring hand of Baha'u'llah has laid and the essential elements of which the will and testament of Abdul Baha has disposed. I consider it my duty to warn every beginner in the faith that the promised glories of the sovereignty which the Baha'i teachings foreshadow can be revealed only in the fullness of time 
that the implications of the Akdas and the will of Abdu'l-Baha as the twin repositories of the constituent elements of that sovereignty are too far reaching for this generation to grasp and fully appreciate. I think that is a section worth memorizing. If you have my copy of the book, this is page 16, and I'm just going to read that part again. Um, let's see, where should I start? I would just say, the promised glories of the sovereignty which the Baha'i teachings foreshadow can be revealed only in the fullness of time. That the implications of the Akdas and the will of Abdu'l-Baha as the twin repositories for the constituent elements of that sovereignty are too far-reaching for this generation to grasp and fully appreciate. I cannot refrain from appealing to them who stand identified with the faith to disregard the prevailing notions and the fleeting fashions of the day and to realize as never before that the exploded theories, there Shogi Fendi again being just a master of words, the exploded theories and the tottering institutions of present day civilization must needs appear in sharp contrast with those God-given institutions which are designed to arise upon their ruin. Woo, woo, another one to memorize, my gosh. Um, disregard prevailing notions and the fleeting fashions of the day and realize that the exploded theories and tottering institutions of present-day civilization must needs appear in sharp contrast to those God-given institutions which are destined to arise upon their ruin. I pray that they may realize with all their heart and soul the ineffable glory of their calling and the overwhelming responsibility of their mission and the astounding immensity of their task. For let every earnest upholder of the cause of Baha'u'llah realize that the storms which this struggling faith of God must needs encounter as the process of the disintegration of society advances shall be fiercer than any which it has already experienced. So the storms of this that will assail this faith, in spite of the heroic history of the faith and all of the martyrs, there is worse ahead is what I feel like he's saying. Again, this is 1930, but the Guardian's writings are, are relevant forever, I feel. Okay, let him be aware that so soon as the full measure of the stupendous claim of the faith of Baha'u'llah comes to be recognized by those time-honored and powerful strongholds of orthodoxy whose deliberate aim is to maintain their stronghold over the thoughts and consciences of men, this infant faith will have to contend with enemies more powerful and more insidious than the cruelest torture mongers and the most fanatical clerics who have afflicted it in the past. Woo For a bit of a like personal take on, on what some of this may mean in the present day or, or signs of it, um, please check out my podcast on divine civilization versus new world order. And I have that linked below. Um, just uh, these ideas of, of powerful institutions in the world who don't have the goodwill of mankind in mind and in fact want to do everything to preserve their power. That's how I'm reading this. Let him be aware that so soon as the full measure of the stupendous claim of 
the faith of Baha'u'llah comes to be recognized by those time-honored and powerful strongholds of orthodoxy. And what, what does that mean now? You know, is it, is it religion? Is it politics? Is it um, sort of community organizing? Like, what is, is it the press? Uh, orthodoxy, whose deliberate aim is to maintain their stronghold over the thoughts and consciences of men. This infant faith will have to contend with enemies more powerful and more insidious than the cruelest torture mongers and the most fanatical clerics who have afflicted it in the past. What foes may not in the course of the convulsions that shall seize a dying civilization be brought into existence, who will reinforce the indignities which have already been heaped upon it? And he ends with an exclamation mark. What foes may not, may not in the course of the convulsions that shall seize a dying civilization be brought into existence. So what foes are going to come into existence as civilization dies? And he will reinforce the indignities which have already been heaped upon mankind, civilization, the faith. I'm not sure what it is specifically. Maybe it's all of the above. Well, dear friends, I'm going to stop there. Pretty intense. I'm so glad we're reading this uh, together. Once again, I would love to live stream these, and I have to reach a, a thousand subscribers on YouTube to be able to do that in the way that would be most convenient for me. So if you want to invite your friends to subscribe to this channel and study along with us, then that may open the door for us to be a lot more interactive with these. Thank you so much for joining me. Once again, happy Yamaha. Have a wonderful fast and I will be back next Friday. And until then, I wish you the best for playing your part in making this world a better place. Bye-bye.